Hey guys, it's that time of year again. Welcome to Cold Blood Creations. And in today's video, we're going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to breed reptiles. So guys, when it comes to breeding reptiles, there's no absolute formula, there's no right way, and there's no wrong way, as long as you're successful at doing it. Now, what we're going to share with you is the way we here at Cold Blood Creations do that. And what we try to do is work around specific calendar dates that makes things easy for us to remember. So I'm going to share with you those dates and why they're significant to our breeding program. The first date I want to talk about is September the 30th. So on September 30th, we offer our snakes their very last meal of the season. And we try to make it a good one. We give our snakes as much food as they possibly want to eat on September 30th. The reason why we do that is because they're about to go for the next five months without eating anything. So we want to fatten them up. We want to give them something to make their tummies completely full and now hold them over until our next significant date, which is October 31st or Halloween. So we have fed our snakes for the very last time on September 30th. Now, if you read a lot of reptile books, most people will recommend you give your animals two weeks to digest all the food in their system. However, in my experience, two weeks is just simply not long enough. You don't want to hibernate your animals with undigested food in their bellies. So we give them an entire month, all the way up until October 31st or Halloween, with the heat on, the lights on, we keep their cages really, really warm. That way they can digest any food that's in their stomach and they don't go into hibernation with undigested stomach food and stuff that could rot during the cool weather. So October 31st, we've given them enough time that on that date, we shut our lighting systems off, we shut all of our heating systems off, and by November 1st, our animals are going into their four-month resting period. We also have our four-month resting period during that time where animals don't have to be fed and they don't have to be cleaned. So our next significant date is going to be February the 14th or Valentine's Day. <laughs> Fourteenth, we begin to warm our animals up. We come into our room, we open the blinds, we allow natural sunlight to come into the room, we turn back on our heating systems, and we warm our animals back up, and we prepare them to begin feeding again for the breeding season as follows. So our next important date that we remember is March the 1st. Now our animals have been warmed, our heat systems have been on, our lighting has been on from Valentine's Day up till March 1st. March 1st is the date that we begin offering food to our animals again. We begin by offering small meals just to get their digestive system working again. But all of that begins on March the 1st at our facility. So when you start feeding your snakes again in the springtime, if you've watched any of our other videos, you know we highly recommend the use of some type of feeding apparatus like these tongs right here. Now the reason why we recommend that, especially this time of year, is because these animals waking up out of hibernation usually wake up very, very hungry, and their feeding response is, well, uh, Ooh. and this is what we mean by using a tool. You see the strong feeding response that these king snakes can have this time of year. So guys, if you ever have a king snake to do something like this, he bites the handle of your snake hook. And by the way, if you're going to use a snake hook, we recommend the handle because it's rubber, it's really soft, it doesn't damage their teeth. So if you need to move a snake with a hook, use the soft rubber end and not the metal end. It'll protect your, sne your snake's teeth. But if you need to remove a snake, even off of your fingers, 
You can pry them off, but again, you're likely to break a tooth off in your hands. I want to share with you a little clip here. This was totally unplanned for this video, but I'm going to show you how to get them to turn loose. It's by simply using running water out of a faucet. Turn the water on. Don't let it get too warm. Put this and usually, like so, immediately they will turn loose. Snakes don't like running water on the top of their head, so if one bites your hand and it won't turn you loose, just utilize a faucet, run some water on their head, and usually they'll turn right loose. So when you increase your snake's feeding, you also increase mine and my sister's least favorite chore, which is increase of cage cleaning. And in this next clip, you're gonna see our lovable fillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> You're over here like... Okay guys, so when you increase your feeding with most of your snakes, you also include one of my and my sister's least favorite chore, which is cage cleaning. Stop and moving your hand! She's, she's over here like she's conducting an orchestra. Listen, I got an idea how we're going to film this clip. You also increase cage cleaning, which is mine and my sister's <laughs> favorite chore. <laughs> and speaking of cleaning, Phil Billy wants to show you, well, not so much the correct way of cleaning a cage, but he just wants to do it anyway. So let's move over to him and see what he has to say. All right, guys, you're going to take these off here, right? Right? God, seriously, come on, this is not a joke anymore. All right, you see, first thing you need when it comes to cleaning a snake cage is the first thing you gotta do, you gotta get prepared, you see. And what I do, first thing, you get you a rubber glove like this, and you, you throw it in the trash, because only sissies and communists wear rubber gloves. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna clean this cage, we're gonna open up the cage, and we're gonna find the dirty, well, here we go right here. <laughs> don't be looking at me trying to intimidate me, buddy. You just don't. I'm Phil Billy Deckham. Hey, take the snake out. You're going to take the snake. Why are you cleaning the cage? you got to put him somewhere. And if you got a shirt pocket, there ain't no better place to put the snake than right there in your shirt pocket. Now, we're down to business. Next thing you want to do is take out the dirty water bowl. You take out the dirty water bowl because, well, that's part of cleaning the cages. Since we ain't got nowhere to pour it, well... No, okay, Billy, that's disgusting. Uh... Maybe it wasn't that dirty, but anyway, so whew, now we're going to clean out the old paper and, well, if that happens to you, you can play a good round to smell my finger. What do you girls want to come here and smell my finger? No. No, Billy! Mm. Ball python doesn't have a bad taste to it, you know? So we're going to go ahead and clean out this here paper. Throw the old nasty poopy paper away. Well, it wasn't that nasty. Throw this away. We're going to put some clean, fresh paper back in the cage, just like this. Get the water bowl back. We're going to put a little extra clean water back in this thing. Put the clean water back in the cage. And we're done. And that is how you clean a reptile cage. That is how you get salmonella. Salmonella? Oh, that's superstitious. <laughs> so, so guys, just don't listen to anything Phil Bay says. That is not the recommended way to clean your reptile cages. So when it comes to actually introducing pairs, one of the things that we look for prior to introducing our males and females is what's called a pre-breeding shed. Now after we warm our animals up and we increase feeding, the next thing that we're looking for is for the eyes to go cloudy, especially in our females. I'll give you an example. I'm gonna pull this cage out. Now some of you guys are familiar with our king snake that we call Pooh. Now we've had Pooh for several years. We named her that because she has this habit of, uh, she's not really so much a biter, but she flops her tail around. And if she feels threatened, she'll sling poo everywhere. So a couple years ago, my girls nicknamed her the poo slinger, and we shortened it to poo. But you can see here, her eyes are cloudy. Now, 
once the eyes cloud up like poos here, uh, they're going into what's called a pre-shed. Uh, they'll shed, these females will shed their skin here in probably the next seven to 10 days. Once that shed takes place, that's when we begin to introduce our males. That signifies that the females are getting ready to ovulate and we want to put our males in with our females. Now I'll show you another example of this in a one of our desert teams here. Um, you can see here on this female, if you look at her eyes, they're really cloudy. The skin starts to go kind of pale and uh, as soon as this animal sheds its skin then we'll begin the introductions. Now speaking of introductions, we do breed a lot of king snakes. King snakes are probably one of my absolutely favorite colubrids to work with. One thing you have to be careful with king snakes though is because king snakes do eat other snakes. So I want to give you a word of warning. When you're breeding your king snakes, you introduce a male and a female. Don't ever just put a male in the cage and walk away. Oftentimes what will end up happening is that one of those snakes will grab the other one and if you're not careful, you'll come back to the cage with only one snake instead of two. So we're going to highlight some of the animals that we are looking forward to breeding this year. Hopefully we'll produce offspring from all of these animals. Now here's a short picture montage of the different species and the different animals that we hope to breed this year. video we want to ask you to please give it a thumbs up and subscribe now generally my daughter's the one that comes on here and tells you to do that but she's a little tied up at the moment <laughs> till next time thanks for watching cold blood creations here on youtube look at he's like i killing it i killing it <laughs> it is a snip what I'm sure it's dead already. He's killing the snake hook. Good job, T Ray. <laughs> Into their cage. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> See, the next time we're doing a video, maybe she won't be over here going nee, 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 behind the scenes. So here, let's get this off. Ow! <laughs> oh my god. Right, look, no more mustache. <laughs> Hey guys, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to stay tuned. This is a part one of what's probably going to end up being about a three-part series on breeding reptiles. In our next video, we'll cover actual copulation as well as bearded dragons and leopard geckos. Thanks again for watching.